It is so good to see you all this morning. Good morning. It is a gorgeous day after all of that rain. It is, it is so, so good. I think that the earth is already soaking it up. Things look a little greener today. Would you agree? Yes, maybe? So, um, I'm Pastor Angie. It's good to be with you. It's good to see our folks who are online with us. Keep making sure that you're checking in. I see there are folks who are watching who haven't said hello yet, so make sure that you do that. It is good to be together. There are a couple of announcements I would like to share with you. Next Sunday afternoon, we are going to have an organ recital slash memorial concert. So we will gather back in this space at 4 p.m. next Sunday afternoon. Our own Mary Ann is going to be, I don't want to say showing off, but she's going to definitely be showing you how great this organ sounds. She's been experimenting. She's been checking out all the bells and whistles. And so we will be having that recital uh, concert next Sunday. And then there will be some refreshments afterwards. So please, please, please make sure you plan to attend that. Tell your friends, bring your family. Um, it's going to be a wonderful musical afternoon. So I wanted to make sure to get that in front of you. I'll send out some more reminders as well. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. Um, and you'll hear more reminders at church next Sunday as well. Um, we also had some change in some of our youth group plans, so make sure you are checking your socials and checking out your emails for your teenagers. Teenagers, make sure you're checking your socials and your Elevate emails from Jeff to make sure you are getting the right information. We had to do some schedule changing for that. And we are entering into our last week of Freedom School with kids. And so I would ask for you to be praying over that. I'm sure Pastor Jason will lift that up in prayer. But I just want to lift that up to all y'all as well. Our readings for the next week are also in your bulletin and a few other things as well. Our new office admin is getting her feet under her quite nicely. Um, so make sure that when you get a chance to introduce yourself to Jenny, you take it. Um, our office hours are still in flux, um, so make sure you call first because we would hate for you to waste a trip up over however it is that you get here. Um, so make sure you call first just to make sure someone's here and can help you with whatever it is that you need. So those are the announcements. I wanted to squeeze them all in there. Um, you can always check things out on the bulletin or give us a call and we can clear things up as well. Let's take that deep breath, breathe in God's goodness, breathe out the distractions of the day, of the week, and let us receive the good, good gift of the prelude. My Lord, what a morning. And Mary Ann Jordan's going to play that for God's glory, and we get to listen in.
I invite you to stand for our call to worship. It is printed in our bulletin or in your online worship guide. Um, those come to you almost every Friday. Sometimes, sometimes we forget to program it to come out to you, but usually, usually we're on the ball with that. So it's always available via email. If you'd like that sent to you and we don't have you in there, make sure you let us know. <sighs> we have come to worship God, the living God who calls prophets and teachers to bear witness. We have come to praise God, the almighty God, who answers the forces of hatred and hurt with the power of grace. We have come to worship God, all gracious God, who chooses even you and me to receive and carry the word of life and joy. All glory to God. Let's sing together, Take My Life and Let It Be, number 399 in your United Methodist Hymnal, number 399. may be seated. Friends, our first lesson this morning comes to us from the words of the prophet Jeremiah. We're in chapter 1, looking at verses 4 through 10, and in the New Revised Standard Version, this comes under the heading of Jeremiah's Call and Commission. Friends, I invite you to hear, hear this word this morning. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. 
Then I said, "Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put his hand, put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. May God add his blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of his word. Amen. We're going to join together now for a time of morning prayer. So if your friends, if you are with us at home today and have the ability or the opportunity to try to still or quiet the environment around you, you can, you can try that now. If you're here with us in person, I have some prayer beads that you like to hold on to, perhaps the hand of the person sitting next to you. Go ahead and just go, go ahead and get ready. And let us come together before the Lord this morning prayer. Good morning, God, and thank you. Thank you for this day and for this place and for all of the places that we are gathered. Thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit that unites us together as one in fellowship and in worship of you. Yes, God, we do indeed. We thank you for the rain. We thank you for the growth of the grass for the abundance that is waiting to burst forth in our gardens, for the beauty of the flowers, for all of the goodness of your creation that you overwhelm us with. God, we thank you for your goodness, and we ask for your help in taking a moment to just stop and appreciate. God, we give you thanks and we give you praise for those members of this church family who have been coming and going these past few weeks. For the safe trips to and from, for the times that were shared amongst friends and family on vacation or family reunions or just on little road trips. God, how good it is to have the resources that we do, to get to do all that we are free to do. But we know all are not so fortunate, all are not so lucky. And we lift up, God, those members of this church family, those members of our fam families, those members of this community here who are limited who are limited by their health and what they're able to do. And God, we ask you for healing and for restoration and for renewed and increased strength. We ask you, for, we ask you God, for help for those who are limited in their resources. For those who are struggling, those that we know about, and probably more so, God, even those that, that we don't. ask your blessing upon all the ways that we can help, ways that we can care for them, that we can love them. God, we thank you for all the ways that you are at work already in ways that we do not understand, bringing about good things for those who love you and are called by your name. Lord, we lift up here this day this moment, all of the staff and the volunteers and the students here in our Freedom School as they embark on their last week. For a joyful week. For a successful week. For each and every one of the scholars to demonstrate, God, the growth 
that you have allowed to happen. For one last week full of laughter and learning of kids who didn't know each other six weeks ago becoming friends. It is a truly good and joyful thing, Lord, when people come together in your name to do good things. We thank you for the opportunity to bear witness to you at work. But besides, God, all of these things, all of these things listed so far, each one of us carries with us our own our own weight, and also our own joys. So God, we ask that you hear each and every one of us now in this moment of silence as we lift up our own personal prayers of confession, or of want, or of need, or of joy and thanksgiving. Holy, holy, holy God. We appeal to your great and unending mercy and ask that you hear this and that you hear each and every one of our prayers. And we ask that you hear us now as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On your foot. Hello, test one. Is it? Is this? Yeah. Okay, it is on. I think. Um, hi, friends. Do you want to come up and join us? It'll be fun. I promise. Huh? Okay. All right. Um, so I think Miss Kelly will be back next week. Uh, so don't panic. You're not stuck with me uh, forever. <laughs> um, and I I didn't bring a bag of goodies this week, so I apologize. But we can still have a good conversation. I think. Let me uh, ask you a question. Can I ask you a question? Okay. Have you ever experienced not being able to do something because you were too small or maybe you were too young uh, to, to do that? Yes. Okay. That's a good start. Uh, do you have any examples that you could share? I have one that I'll help you with if you need one. Oh, that's great. Let's hear it. Oh, skydiving. Yeah, you're probably you're probably a little small to skydive. So that's a that's a great one. That's a great great uh example. Oh. Um like to own a house? No. Oh, to go in like a haunted house? Oh, that is scary. Uh, oh, and to own one probably too, yeah. So um, I was thinking, and Miss Kelly shared this one with me. Um, uh, when you go, have you guys been to Kings Island? You've never been to Kings Island? No. Okay. Because they're pretty small. That's true. You're very small. Um, and that's the thing is when you go to Kings Island and you're about to get on a big scary roller coaster, they hold this like stick up to you to measure you and you have to be tall enough to ride the roller coaster safely, right? So um, here's the deal. Sometimes 
uh, we think that we have to be old enough to do things, that we have to grow up in order to do important things. But here's the deal. God wants to use us at any age, even at your age, our age, right? We're really young, right? And cool. So, um, but God, God wants to use us at any age. And here's the deal. God came to someone named Jeremiah, Jeremiah, and he told Jeremiah that he was going to be a prophet, a prophet. That's great, because I was going to ask if you knew what that meant. And so a prophet is sharing to people kind of on God's behalf. He's sharing what what God wants to say to a group of people. And here's the deal. Yeah. Here's the deal. Sometimes that's really hard because because a prophet would have to like share important things that are true. But maybe people didn't really want to hear it because it meant that they had to like change the way that they were living. Have you ever had to tell the truth before and it was hard? Yeah, because maybe maybe you were maybe you were scared how someone might like react. You you thought maybe they might be angry with you. No, never. Never? Okay. All right, what about you? Have you ever had to tell the truth and it was kind of difficult? Yes. Okay. So Jeremiah was called to tell the truth from God, but it was hard because he was worried how people were going to respond. So uh, it says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nation. So that's what God was saying to Jeremiah. So God had a job. For Jeremiah before he was even born before he was even born and that is the same for you and I what? and everyone yeah before we were born God has something important planned for us he knows what your life will be like before anyone else knows and God understands everything about you he knows yeah yeah, come on. That's great. Yeah, he knows because he's God and he has created each of you uh, for something incredible. But here's the deal. Jeremiah was nervous hearing these words from God because he wondered, Jeremiah wondered how he would be able to do anything special or important since he was just a kid. Right. Have you ever maybe felt that way at all? That because like you're a kid, you Yeah, so, and God is with you. That's the thing. And so Jeremiah said to God, he said, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a kid. I am only a youth. And this is where it gets really good. This is, this is how God responds to Jeremiah. Okay, he says, do not say, I am only a youth. For to all to whom I send you, you shall go, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. For I will deliver you, declares the Lord. And so God is promising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God is promising to be with Jeremiah. He's not just going to he's not just going to give Jeremiah a job and then leave him in the dust. And that's the same for you and I. He's not just going to give you something really important to do and then just like leave you alone to do it. Yeah. So God promises the same to us that even in situations. Here's the deal. Even in situations. Here, have a seat. Even in situations uh, that might be scary, even even in situations that might be scary or we might need courage, God is with us. Isn't that awesome? How cool is that? And so when we read our Bibles and we pray and we pay attention to those around us, we can get an idea of what God wants and how he might want to use us to show his love. It might take courage and, br- and bravery, but with God, we can do anything. Right? Isn't that awesome? Okay, so uh, let's pray. Will you pray with me? Dear God, help us to have bravery and courage to live like you want us to live and to love like you want us to love. Thank you for promising to be with us even when things get hard. Help us to depend on you in those moments. Amen. Friends, we are so grateful for the ways that you continue to support mission and ministry 
you get to hear a little bit about it. I try to keep it in front of you. Um, I, I don't remember who I have told, but um, the Freedom School uh, mission ministry that y'all are engaged in, we went out into the neighborhood and did a little service walk this week, and we got to visit with um, one of our shut-ins, and we were putting these hearts around town. They're known by our love hearts are back, and so if you see those, I hope that you are encouraged. That's one of the ways that you're supporting um, the mission and ministry and people coming out into the world. And one of those Freedom School kids said he wanted to put it on the rail um, so he could look out his window um, and maybe see the church, but see that heart and be reminded of how the church helped him learn how to read better. And I, I just want you to know that, that you are planting seeds and you are growing love, friends. And that's the ways that, that you're giving and of yourself, of your time, of your tithes. That's how you are growing love. And that's your faithfulness at work. And so... We are so grateful, and God has shown us this love, and this is us showing our love back. And so let us listen to the musical offering as we ponder the ways that, that we're going to keep being faithful and the ways that God is faithful to us. God, you are so good, so generous, so gracious, so loving, and we are so grateful. Lord, we ask your blessing upon all of the gifts, the gifts of self, the gifts of tithes and offerings, all of the ways that we offer ourselves to you. We do this because we know love, and we know love because you have shown it to us through your son, Jesus. So we offer these gifts, we offer ourselves, we offer it all in love to you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. may be seated. Our second reading is also from the prophet Jeremiah, and this, I'm looking around to see who's in the room. If you have sensitive ears, you may want to cover them or at least know that you've been warned. This reading is, is maybe PG-13. Maybe. You probably don't hear this word at home. All right, here we go. This is Jeremiah chapter 3, verses 6 
through 14. Maybe that makes him listen closer. Maybe I should do that every time I read, because all of a sudden, some of you are sitting up straighter. (laughs) All right, here we go. This is under the heading, A Call to Repentance. The Lord said to me in the days of King Josiah, Have you seen what she did, that faithless one, Israel? How she went up on every hill and under every green tree and played the whore there? And I thought, after she has done all this, she will return to me. But she did not. She did not return, and her false sister, Judah, saw it. She saw that for all the adulteries of that faithful one, Israel, I had sent her away with a decree of divorce, yet her false sister Judah did not hear. But she too went and played the whore. Because she took her whoredom so lightly, she polluted the land, committing adultery with stone and tree. Yet for all this, her false sister Judah did not return to me with her whole heart, but only in pretense says the Lord. Then the Lord said to me, Faithless Israel has shown herself less guilty than false Judah. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return, faithless Israel, says the Lord. I will not look on you in anger, for I am merciful, says the Lord. I will not be angry forever, only acknowledge your guilt that you have rebelled against the Lord your God and scattered your favors among strangers under every green tree and have not obeyed my voice, said the Lord. Return, O faithless children, says the Lord, for I am your master and I will take you, one from a city and two from a family, and I will bring you. the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts everywhere be acceptable in your sight. O holy God, So today we begin the prophet Jeremiah's readings. We finished up Isaiah yesterday, if you've been reading along in the Bible year with us. And um, and Isaiah has been my favorite um, prophet. As This week, as we were getting ready to enter into Jeremiah, as I've been getting ready to preach in Jeremiah for the next couple of weeks, um, I've been doing a little digging, a little revisiting, and um, and it's been good. It's been good for my brain, and it's been good for my heart because um, Jeremiah, Jeremiah brings a lot of baggage <laughs> when he comes to us, and as he as he tells us the story and reminds us of the ways that God is calling to us, the ways that we don't always pay attention, the ways that we don't always listen ways that sometimes we just continue to do our own thing. And so it was good for me to dig back into Jeremiah. And in my Wesley study Bible, um, in the footnotes, there are boxes um, that have Wesleyan core terms in them. They're highlighted, and it gives concise definitions and describes, um, it gives sentences that that are good descriptors of that core term and some examples. Um, And both of today's lessons um, come from today's readings that you're going to have if you haven't already done your Bible reading for the day. Um, As I said, we finished up Isaiah yesterday, and it was really good in the devotionals. It had that, that reminder that Jesus, when he preached his first sermon, it came from Isaiah 61, verses 1 or 1 and 2 are what Jesus read. And Jesus, and I promise you, I'm bringing it back around in just a second. Um, he stopped short in verse 2. 
And so what he read, what he read reminded us that he's all about liberation. And these, these prophets are, are telling about liberation and how things are going to be different, how they've been living in a time of retribution. Things are going to be different. And so that, that last bit in Isaiah is kind of setting the stage for what is to come. The spirit of the Lord is co- of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And that's where he stopped. And if you were in the devotion, you'll remember that Pastor McGray said that it stops because Jesus is all about liberation and not retribution. And so it's setting the stage, friends, for what the prophets are setting Israel, are setting Judah, are setting the people up for. And not only does the, the, the lens that we're seeing this through, because if you're gathered here, more than likely you're a Christian. If you're watching online with us and worshiping online with us, more than likely you are a Christian, or at least trying to figure out what this Christianity stuff is like. We look at the prophets through this lens, We see that it's setting the stage for Jesus' ministry, but it helps us see Jeremiah in a more helpful light. Because of all the prophets, we probably know Jeremiah best. Because he, he was very personal in the writings. We get to see his baggage on display. We get to see how he struggled, how he cried over the people, how he cried over the fact that we just, and I say we because... We're still dealing with a lot of this stuff. We just can't seem to get it together, can we? (sighs) Can I get an amen? Amen. We just can't. And Jeremiah demonstrated immense courage as a prophet. He faced so many challenges and hardships in his life, yet remained steadfast in delivering God's message to the people of Judah. I mean, think about what they were doing. I mean, God really had some pretty harsh words. I don't, I don't use that language when I'm calling people out on their business. I'm about course direction and course correction. I don't use that language. But you might remember that Jeremiah lived during such a tumultuous time in the history of ancient Israel. So he was called. You heard Pastor Jason share his call story. It might remind you of what Isaiah's was like. Isaiah had the hot coals to his lips. Jeremiah, uh, God put his words in Jeremiah. He touched Jeremiah's mind. He was called by God to prophesy during the reigns of several kings. The nation of Judah had become morally and spiritually corrupt. And so the whoredom that he's talking about is the idolatry, the social injustice, all of the things that they were doing wrong, all the ways they weren't listening to God. Does that sound familiar, friends? Jeremiah's prophetic messages were often met with opposition, rejection, and persecution. Such is the life of a prophet, which is why we are so hesitant to become one. Amen? We know what happens to the prophets. You want to be a prophet? Heck no. But we want to have the courage of a prophet. We want to be able to be brave and courageous and speak the truth, right? We want to be able to do that. We want to have that that real courage. So Jeremiah, when God calls him, Jeremiah says, I'm just a boy. And God says, I'm not having that nonsense. I'm calling you. I'm equipping you. I'm giving you what you need. You're going to do this. Friends, God says that same thing to us. God has created us. God has called us. And you can be certain that God has given us what it is that we need to do what God has called us create us to do, to be. And sometimes we have to dig deep. I mean, sometimes we have to go really deep to 
find that courage. Because much like Jeremiah, who lived in this tumult, these tumultuous times, and he's speaking what God has told him, and he's giving the words that God has told him, and everyone is like, whatever. How many times have you gone out and, and lived your faith or spoken something about your faith and someone's been like, whatever? Or invited a family member or someone to church and they've been like, whatever. Golfing is way more fun than church. Or football, or, or, or. But friends, we have to dig in and find that courage. Because we too are living in a tumultuous and broken culture. A tumultuous and broken world. And as Christ followers... Maybe we're not called to be like Jeremiah. Maybe we're not called to be another prophet. But we are called to be courageous. We are called to share the good news, to plant seeds, to, to give out this faith, to give out this grace. He's called us. He calls us every morning, every day that we wake up is a good day. It's also another opportunity to live into that call. So as we begin this first book of Jeremiah, we remember his courage, and we can be inspired by that courage and dig deep to find the courage that has been poured into us. We can apply it to our own lives. We can cultivate and demonstrate this real courage. We know that Jeremiah was seeking God's will for him, for God's people. And sometimes he ran up against, or maybe all the time, he ran up against opposition. But he got himself fortified. That's what we do when we come in here on Sundays. We're not just coming here to see our friends, are we, church? Let, let me let me hear that a little bit better. Are we coming here just to see our friends? Yeah. I mean, that's an added benefit, right? But that's not just why we come. We come to get refilled and refueled so we can go back out into the mission field and keep growing love, keep planting seeds, keep spreading that grace everywhere. We come in to seek God's will. We come in to fed and cared for by community so we can go back out and live into that call. We come in to study together, to hear the word, to be prayed over and to pray with and to pray over, to cultivate relationships with one another and with God so that we're fortified and courageous. We're also called to speak truth in love, and that does not mean, friends, to beat each other up with Bible verses. That does not mean to beat someone up with your Bible. If I'm going to try to convince someone in my family to come to church with me, you think that's going to work? What's going to work is when you're living your life as a follower of Christ, they see the joy, and they see the love, and they see the kindness, they see the fruit of your faith. They see that, that peace that you have, that peace that you have in the midst of the storms of life. And they say, okay, I, I get it. I, I want some of that. When we speak the truth in love, we're not condemning folks. We're reminding folks. We're showing folks the better way. I love how in that little square that I was telling you about, the Wesleyan core term, under today's readings, the core term is conviction of sin. How many like it when that happens to you? When the Holy Spirit is working on you and you feel that conviction? Some of you are not making eye contact. (laughs) 
and our viewers just dropped by three. Just teasing, they didn't. <laughs> no, um, the example I used earlier was, um, so the conviction of sin, I love how, the, it's very, very concise here. It says the conviction of sin is the recognition that we are out of harmony with the will of God. I love that analogy. We are out of harmony with the will of God. So when you are convicted of sin, because we all fall short, we all mess up, we all, we all have that, that favorite sin. Phew. We still go there, even though we're not, we're not supposed to. I don't know. I don't know what yours is. Well, some of you, I might have a new thing. Um, listen up, Pastor Jason, because I don't repeat gossip. So listen close, right? I'll only tell you once, and then all of a sudden, I'm feeling the Holy Spirit. And as I grow in faith, as I grow in Christ, then it's. doesn't come up as we grow in our faith as we grow that conviction the holy spirit we start listening and and we stop we stop sinning we stop falling into that trap and the chains of sin no longer um, have us bound and so what we hear is from our prophet jeremiah is that as we're living in as we're digging in as we're tapping into that real courage we're seeing the sin in ourselves. We're seeing, we're seeing it out in the world, and we're doing our very best to do the better way, to live in the better way, to show the better way, to be an example of the better way. And living this courageous life, it's sometimes difficult. I mean, it got prophets killed. We have to embrace the perseverance because it, it's not very likely that any of us are going to get killed for our faith. It's not very likely that any of us are going to get stoned for our faith. It's not very likely that, that a whole lot is going to happen to us because of our faith. Not in a negative one. Not in a negative way. People might laugh at us, but shoot, I'm always trying to get people to laugh at me. See, they crickets. <laughs> Friends, as we are digging in and finding this courage, there, there are things that we can do. We, we do speak the truth in love. We trust in God's provision. We embrace that perseverance. We find strength in community. We respond with love and forgiveness. And that's, that's sometimes hard to do, isn't it? We, we want to respond in love. We want to to be forgiving, but sometimes that's, that's the place, that's the rub. It's, it's not gossip, it's not, um, you know, it's not gluttony, it's not addiction. Those, those aren't the sins that affect us. It is this, this lack of forgiveness. When we pray for our Father to forgive us as we've been forgiven, we're, we're praying for that, friends. We've been forgiven. We need to learn how to forgive. And some of us hang on to that stuff. And we can become more courageous. We can tap into that real courage when we learn to respond in love and forgiveness. Because it takes courage to forgive. So if we are going to cultivate courage like Jeremiah's, we're going to seek God's will. We're going to build one another up in community. We're going to trust in the ways that God provides for us. We're going to do our very best to persevere and to step up to the plate, to live into that call that God has placed upon us. And we're going to try our very best to respond in love and forgiveness to move beyond the chains of sin and death because we've been freed. Beloveds, 
as we think about ways that we are empowering Christ, ways that we are planting love and growing love, ways that we're demonstrating love, it calls us to be courageous and just turn on the news and we can see how badly the world needs this love how badly the world needs us to be courageous. Let's do this. Will you pray? Will you pray with me? God, you are so, so good. Help us. Help us in those places where we fall short. Help us in those times where we are tempted to put the chains of sin back on. Help us when we are feeling afraid. Help us when inaction becomes our response. Guide us, Lord. Help us tap into that fearlessness. Help us tap into that real courage that you have poured into us through your love, through the lessons of your prophets, through the grace of your son, Jesus Christ. It's in his powerful, strong name that we pray. Amen. Let's stand and sing our sending song, sent forth by God's blessing, number 664, in your United Methodist hymnal, number 664. Indeed, we are sent forth by God's blessing. So go out into this world, you courageous followers of Jesus. Go out 
and continue to sow those seeds of grace and love and hope and truth to go out into this world in the name of the one who made you, the one who saved you, and the one who sustains you. Go forth in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in peace. Amen. You may be seated.